Christina's Kitchen. I am so excited to finally be back again. Uh, we had to skip last month's cooking class because of an ice storm and I'm just so thankful the weather is nicer this month and uh, we're ready to take on a class on healthy breakfast. So I think we have a minute or two, is that right? Uh, so take a moment right now to hit share Share this with your friends. Uh, share this to your Facebook page. Uh, tell your friends to join us. And if you are joining us now live, please comment. Uh, tell me who you are, where you're commenting from, where you're joining us from. And stay on our live class because I want to hear from you. Uh, I love your questions, your comments. Uh, it's what makes our cooking class fun when you guys can interact. So um, share it and we'll be on in just a minute. With us. How are you in a relationship? <laughs> so, I want to introduce my crew whenever the crew says that they're ready to start. We have an earthquake. There we go. Oh, much better. Now I can look at two cameras and look the same direction. <laughs> I promise we don't have any fancy equipment. We just have a tripod with cell phones. But it works. Which is. Yeah. Which is why we have to uh, like pause the video in order to share it on Facebook. Yes, here are our cell phones. <laughs> because we're using the same cell phone to do everything. So what time is it? It's time to start. It's five minutes after six. Five minutes after? Oh, yeah. all righty. Uh, Trish from South Carolina. Trish Taylor says hello. Hi, Trish. I'm glad you could join us. Welcome. All right. Well, uh, Madison, if you could run to the kitchen and grab my recipes for me then we are ready to start. So, uh, let's see. I guess it was two months ago that was our last class. It seems like yesterday, but yet it was so long ago. Uh, we did a very fabulous uh, class on healthy breakfast part one. Thank you. And uh, I'm going to uh, introduce my crew before I get too far. Madison, you can come back over here. Madison is our new apprentice that's here at the restaurant. Today is her first day. And well, you know, she gets to help me with the cooking class. And uh, do I need to introduce you? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> this is my dear hubby. And just so you guys know, we just celebrated our 12 year wedding anniversary last I was, week. I thought it was a 13 year engagement anniversary. Well, we did celebrate that too. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta count as many of those years as I can. <laughs> 13 year engagement anniversary and 12 year wedding anniversary. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. So, right. uh, Madison and Daniel will be helping me. And Lexi is in the kitchen. You'll probably be seeing her off and on mm -hmm. helping us too. Shall we so, go ahead and pray? Yes. Why don't we pray as we get started? Father in heaven, thank you for your blessings. Thank you that we can have this class this evening. I pray that you will bless us and bless the food and Lord that you will bless each one who is watching from home or wherever they are and that we can meet again soon in person sometime in Jesus name. Amen. 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 All right. So these guys are going to watch your comments for me and uh, they will be the voices that you hear hollering about as you comment. So um, they get to look at whatever you commented while they were gone. <laughs> so uh, last month uh, or two months ago, I should say, our last class, uh, we did Healthy Breakfast Part 1. If you missed it, you need to scroll back in the Facebook page and go watch it, or I believe it is on YouTube. Is that right, Daniel? It should be. So uh, you can go on our YouTube channel, uh, look up Christina's Kitchen on YouTube, and you will also find that class. So this class is Part 2. Uh, so for Part 1, if you missed it, we did Pancakes. Uh, they were gluten-free, plant-based pancakes. Absolutely amazing. We did two different kinds. We did a buckwheat pancake and we did uh, a brown rice pancake. Um, they were absolutely amazing. And we also did like uh, strawberry applesauce to go on top of the pancakes. And we also did uh, tofu scramble deluxe, which was really amazing. So today we're kind of going to do a little bit more simple uh, what do you do when you don't have time to make pancakes uh, or tofu scramble when you're in a hurry and you just need to grab something to go? Of course, there's always the old staples, right? Uh, oatmeal is very fast. And you don't have to eat plain oatmeal. Uh, by all means, uh, you can make an oatmeal bowl. 
Uh, you can put uh, chopped fruit on top. Uh, put some chopped dates in it if you want extra sweetener instead of adding sugar or honey. Uh, you can um, uh, put homemade granola on it. Uh, you can put uh, shredded coconut or flaxseed or chia seed. There's so many things you can do with oatmeal. But you know, sometimes we get tired of oatmeal. <laughs> so it's like, well, what's something fast and easy that we can do? So to start out, I want to talk to you about smoothies. Yeah, we had several comments, but I okay. want to read the last one. Trish Taylor says, I'm getting hungry. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> and you go ahead and read the other ones before I move on too far. Oh, there's, there's one from Madison, from Anika. Hey, Madison, I love you all. Christina McGreed McPeters and Daniel and Madison from... Oh, that's from Brent. I thought it was from, from your mom. It's from oh, your dad. From your dad. All right. <laughs> Hi, Brent. We're glad you can watch us tonight. Yeah. Hey, Brent, we've got to get together sometime. <laughs> Any others? Uh, you said there were several? Yeah. Uh, Joyce C. from North Florida. Uh, Trish says before, she says, I eat there every time I come home. Awesome. And Yay. Christine Parker says, anybody who has not tried Christine is really needs to try it. <laughs> Aw, you guys are sweet. And welcome to all of you, and if you are just now joining us live, please tell us where you're joining from. We'd love to hear from you. So, uh, you guys have no idea. If you don't comment and talk to me while I'm doing this, I turn into this stoic, like, expressionless, uh, scared, stiff girl that you don't normally see very often, because I, I need your interaction to keep you going. So thank you, guys. <laughs> all right, so smoothies. One of the things with smoothies is they're fast and they're easy. You don't have to have a big fancy blender. Um, if I thought of it this morning, I would have brought my little Nutribullet. Nutribullets are wonderful or uh, Magic Bullets or there's other brands that are similar things. Those are great when you need a one person, single size serving of smoothie. Um, and even better, the cup you blend it in is the cup you get to take it out the door with. And I really like to do those in the morning sometimes when I need just to grab and go and drink in the car. <laughs> so um, if you don't have a blender and you're wanting to just do smoothies, that's an option for you. Um, now, if you're gonna be a whole, like, uh, what do you say? All the way in, like, die hard, I'm gonna make everything from scratch and I've got a big family and I'm gonna make all my cheese sauces and salad dressings, everything like we do here at Christina's Kitchen, then you're gonna need a big fancy blender. Um, but if it's just you yourself, a small blender works fine. Um, just uh, do what works best for you. One of the downsides of smoothies is that they're often high in sugar. Uh, we tend to like things sweet, and it's not bad to do sweet smoothies. I mean, especially if you're not adding sugar to your whole fruit, uh, but Doing a lot of smoothies for a long amount of time, especially if it's like one of the main meals a day or doing it every single day, day in and day out, it's better to look for smoothies that aren't quite so sweet. So my goal is, if I have enough time, I want to share with you a few recipes and uh, at the end, um, I will make sure and post uh, all the recipes that I'm sharing with you uh, in a PDF handout. Um, on Facebook so that you can download it later. I don't have it up yet, uh, but I will get that up by tonight. So if you don't get it by tonight, you can get it tomorrow morning and download all the recipes. But otherwise, get a paper and pen. Most of our smoothie recipes are very simple and you should be able to write most of them down. Uh, so having a variety of smoothies is good. Uh, so. I'm gonna share with you some of my old standby favorites, and like I said, to be on time, we'll tell how many. But the first one I have to show you is what I call my dessert smoothie, okay? <laughs> so, it's the best tasting one, right? So you gotta have that one. <laughs> or maybe I should show that to you last, so that way it doesn't melt. No, we can stick in the freezer, it won't melt, it'll be fine. Uh, so my dessert smoothie, uh, we call it our fruit smoothie ice cream. <laughs> Uh, and it is actually one of the ones that we serve here at the restaurant. It's very popular. Uh, a lot of people really like it. And uh, so I have to show that to you. That's one of my favorites. Uh, so for the fruit smoothie ice cream, uh, the first thing you need is one cup of your favorite kind of milk. 
and it really does not matter what kind. I prefer to use unsweetened, so that way I, you, it's more natural. Um, so what I'm using today is an organic unsweetened soy milk. You can also use almond milk, you can use cashew milk, coconut milk, rice milk, oat milk, like there's so many different milks. And for smoothie, you can use any of them. It really doesn't matter. It just depends on your preference for taste texture and whatever you're allergic to or trying to stay away from. So we're going to put one cup in here and I do not bother measuring in depth except that uh, my blender comes with little lines on here. It says one, two, three, four. Those are one cup lines. They're not exact but they give me a good idea and so I just use that as my one cup uh, line. Charlotte says Joshua makes this recipe before I said home. Yep. Go, and, Joshua. And I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, but it, it's a Zay L. Daw from Solomon Islands is watching. So. Welcome. Welcome. So glad you can join us. Okay, so we, uh, strawberry banana is one of your simple ones. You can also do uh, the one Daniel and I like to do at home is cranberries and strawberries. Uh, you have to put a little extra orange juice to help counteract the sour cranberries. Um, and this uh, smoothie is not near as sweet. In fact, it's nice because you don't have to worry about it being too sweet for you with all those cranberries in it. Um, but uh, the cranberry-strawberry combination is really good, and it's one of my personal favorites. Another one is um, you can do mixed berries, just, just all mixed berries, nothing else. Um, or you can do a mango uh, smoothie with, uh, I just take, when mangoes go on sale, I buy a bunch and peel them and slice them up and put it in the freezer and in freezer bags and then use them for smoothies. So I just put in frozen mangoes 
and you can put banana in it if you want or just do all mango if you want and then instead of uh, soy milk i use coconut milk so it gives it like a tropical nice thick creamy smoothie and oh wow that's delicious so anyway i'm gonna make you all hungry talking about smoothies <laughs> now <laughs> i've already got my mouth watering <laughs> okay so we're gonna put in some bananas you basically want about two cups of frozen fruit for your one cup of um, milk. So I just put in two small bananas and we're going to put about a cup of strawberries. And depending on how thick you want your ice cream will depend on how many frozen fruit you put in. If you start blending and you're like, man, this is way too runny, put some more in before it's done blending. If you wait till it's done blending and then say, I'm gonna add one more strawberry, guess what that strawberry does in your blender? It goes wee, wee, wee all the way around and you still have a whole strawberry when you pour it in your cup. So you want your frozen fruit to go in before it's done blending. I think that looks like about a cup. It might be more, we'll see. <laughs> if it's too thin and it doesn't blend, guess what, you can add more milk. That's the wonderful thing. Um, so that's it. We're just going to blend that up and we're gonna make a ton of noise. So you have to turn your volume and, and down. And to do Sorry. this recipe right, it does kind of require a mind mix. No. Or something powerful. No, I, I should tell you the story behind this one. I invented this recipe when I was in college and all I had was a little Walmart Oyster blender. <laughs> <laughs> so no, you don't have to have a Vitamix. But because the Walmart Oyster blender don't have these fancy plungers, mm -hmm. I, I used a, the bottom of a wood spoon as my plunger and of course you don't do it while it's running. So I push it down, I blend it a little bit, shut it off, push it down again, blend it a little bit, shut it off, push it down again and blend it. And it really does blend. And I actually served a lot of my fellow classmates. Uh, I did it like Saturday night supper. I would make a big uh, batch of smoothie in my little bitty Walmart Oster blender. And so yes, you can use this recipe without a vitamin. <laughs> But I will say, if you want to do a double batch, you need a vitamins. At least you have to do <laughs> one batch at a time in a smaller blender. <laughs> at home, I do a double batch. <laughs> and usually trip the breaker a couple times trying to blend it too. Oh, no. <laughs> Perfectly matches your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't plan that either. <laughs> All right, so uh, Madison, I'm gonna let you stick that in the freezer so we don't melt by the time because we want to eat this stuff. It's just gonna melt if uh, we don't put it in now. So, so that's the way you serve it for dessert, right? In fact, if you want to make it a really good dessert, you sprinkle like. Uh, carob chips on top of it and put some like shredded coconut and like totally make it like the most amazing dessert. Maybe a little granola on top, especially the sweet granola kind. Charlotte says I'm scared of my Vitamix. <laughs> it's really nothing to be scared of as long as you keep your fingers and spatulas out of the way while it's running. <laughs> and and, and keep the lid on. And Christine Parker wishes she lived closer. She says you could open a restaurant in Cincinnati. 
You can open it, Christine. <laughs> but I'm only me. I'm, I'm just here. But I'd love to come visit you sometime. All right, so I want to show you what to do with this to make this more like a breakfast, even if you want the sweet smoothie, okay? And that is uh, to do more than just smoothie. Let, let's add to this, right? Okay, so the easiest thing, first of all, is you can take chia seed, flax seed, uh, you can add some, some fiber ingredients and actually put it in before you blend it. Make sure you blend all that in together. So that will add some fiber to it um, to help slow the digestion and make even less sugar. Uh, also, you can make a breakfast bowl out of it. I'm going to show you how to make a breakfast bowl. Um, so I like to take some fresh fruit. And I did have a knife. Yes, I do have a knife. Thank you. Take some fresh fruit and let's see, we've got an apple here. We're going to cut up some apple into a bowl. Jeff Phillips said, okay, I want a bite. I'm making this right after. Ha, <laughs> yay! <laughs> you totally can, simple and easy. There, so we put in, depending on how hungry you are, depends on how much fruit you put in it, right? Um, I must be starving, because I'm like putting a whole apple in here. <laughs> Okay, my bowl will be too small if I put a whole apple. I better stop. So there's three quarters of an apple there. Um, let's see, what else could we put in here? I can always get you a bigger bowl, Christina. Um, yes, just like me and the pots, right? <laughs> pots are never big <laughs> enough. The bowls are never big enough either. Uh, Do you see. have to dice your apples before you put them in the blender? In the blender? No, this is going in my bowl. Huh. So this isn't going to be blended at all. This is fresh fruit. Let's see, let's put some, um, of course, you don't have to put banana in because there's already banana in there, right? If I had some mandarin oranges, I would put some mandarin oranges in there. Um, I've got some grapes here. Let's put some grapes in here. How's that sound? If you like lots of bananas, you can slice up another banana in there too. The nice thing is, even though this seems like a lot of sugar because you got fruit with fruit, right? Uh, you're actually adding a lot of fiber. Uh, you'd be amazed at how much fiber is in your whole fruits. And uh, you're not adding a lot of added sugar. The only sweetener we put in here was that two tablespoons of orange juice concentrate. And the rest of it is all solid fruit. Um, but look at this. Let's uh, take our fruit and we're going to put some smoothie with it. This is like a yogurt cup, you know? Uh, just with a smoothie instead of yogurt. Oh, this is getting good. Now we gotta make this look pretty, right? So let's put a couple of grapes on top of it. And uh, maybe a piece of apple with it. I'm going to interview this whole apple anyway. <laughs> Carry it over. Okay. Madison, you're going to have to take a pick, photograph pick of that, this. Pick that up and we'll bring our cameras closer okay. to you. I'm, I will when I'm done, but okay. I'm not done yet. Oh, you're not done yet. We're not done yet. I thought your bowl was full. No, we got to put some granola on there. We have some sugar-free tropical fruit granola. And if you guys want to know the recipe, it's on my website. You gotta have some crunch with your smoothie, right? Okay, now I will hold it up so you guys can see. And I'm just gonna come a little closer. Go ahead. You can make everybody hungry. If this doesn't make you hungry, I don't know what will. <laughs> <laughs> breakfast you guys I mean seriously or even a, a, a supper it makes an amazing supper as well 
Um, or hey, I mean, lunch. I mean, who says you can't eat ice cream for lunch, right? <laughs> so that's my ice cream bowl. Um, low sugar, uh, guilt-free ice cream bowl. Um, and uh, there's, there's so many things you can do with that. Now, this is going to melt before we eat it, so what should we do with it? Maybe stick it in the freezer? Hopefully it won't freeze the fruit too much. <laughs> Well, we'll be eating fruit popsicles under that smoothie. <laughs> okay, so let's see. I have another blender here. So let's do another smoothie. Uh, we have. Let's do one that's not not uh, so much sweet. I want to talk to you about a uh, smoothie that I like to make at home, and I've actually taught my husband how to make it too. And I do it actually in a little future bullet. And it's a green smoothie that has ingredients that I would not normally eat otherwise. Uh, it's not very sweet. And the best part about it, it's actually a heavy metals detox smoothie. And uh, I have seen amazing results in my health by drinking this. Um, and I don't do it every day, but uh, I do it quite a bit. And so I'm going to share it with you. So the first thing that it calls for is a banana. However, I am allergic to bananas. So <laughs> that's probably why I do the cranberry strawberry smoothie at home instead of the strawberry banana smoothie. <laughs> you can eat some bananas. Just I can lot. eat bananas in small quantities, but in a smoothie you're getting a lot of banana. And I usually end up with an allergic reaction. So I, because the recipe calls for a banana, guess what I replaced it with? Cranberry. <laughs> of course. <laughs> That's a very sour banana. <laughs> it's a very sour banana. Hey, it lowers the sugar content of your smoothie. It gives you lots of fiber, lots of vitamin C. Um, it's an antioxidant. It's healthy for you. So I think there is um, some frozen blueberries and cranberries in there. If you can grab both of those. So it calls for one cup of wild blueberries which unfortunately I forgot them and I left them at home. So for the demo, I'm using regular blueberries. Blueberries are also good. Uh, thank you so much. But they say that wild blueberries actually help with the heavy metal detox even more than regular blueberries do. If you don't have wild blueberries, they sell them at Costco. You can get organic wild blueberries in the freezer section. Um, but hey, if you have blueberries, just use them, okay? Um, these blueberries are locally grown uh, from our local farm and uh, they're amazing. So we're gonna put in a cup of cranberries and a cup of blueberries. And the next ingredient is one of those foods that everyone's like, ew, gross. Well, not everyone, okay. Let me say, about 50% of the population says it's nasty and 50% of the population says it's really good. And that is cilantro. Uh, cilantro is one of those things you don't think of in a smoothie. And the reason it's in here is because A, the green leafy vegetables are amazing for you, and B, cilantro is one of the best in taking out heavy metals. So since this is a heavy metal detox smoothie, uh, we are going to use cilantro. Now, personally, I hate cilantro. I like the smoothie. So I promise you, you don't taste very much of it. Um, they say that people are born with a gene that either makes them love or hate cilantro. And if you have the gene that I have, cilantro tastes like dish soap. <laughs> if you don't have it, it doesn't taste that way for some reason. And uh, it's a weird phenomenon that science hasn't been able to explain yet. So I promise you the smoothie does not taste like dish soap. <laughs> it tastes like Mexican cooking to me. Yes. Yes, well, that's because you guys we don't have, have that gene that I got. <laughs> My brother says it smells like stink bugs. Stink bugs? Stink yeah, bugs. well, she's probably right. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's take a poll. How many of you like cilantro, and how many of you think it smells or tastes something like dish soap or something awful? Yeah, I'm let's see if I can get this twisty off. Well, before you started that smoothie, Christine Parker said she's officially starving. Ah, yeah, that was before I pulled out the cilantro. <laughs> Maybe you'll be starving enough to try the cilantro smoothie too. You never know. 
Ah, I cannot get this twisty off for the life of me, so I'm just going to slide it down and do it this way. Um, I don't know if you saw, maybe I should have said something before I pulled that bag off. Did you see how I have my cilantro stored? Um, I have it in a jar. Like flowers in a vase. Like flowers in a vase, yeah. I can't even put it back in now because I took the boosty off. I'll get it back in. But anyway, uh, when you store it in a jar with water, like flowers in a vase, and you put this little bag over the top of it and secure it at the bottom. Try to keep the bag not too wet. Um, and you can store it in the refrigerator like that. Lesson one, don't tip it over in your refrigerator like that. Because <laughs> there's water in it and it makes a mess. But So, so Charlotte loves cilantro and Jeff Phillips loves cilantro and guacamole. All right, well we have two people who like it. Nobody sides with me that they don't like it yet. But anyway, do you see how pretty and green that is? I bought the cilantro a week ago. It's been in the fridge for a week and you would not be able to tell. It's beautiful, fresh, green, and it's because of keeping it in the jar like that. All right, so the recipe calls for a half a cup of cilantro, which is about a quarter of a bunch. I don't measure, I just simply throw it in. The other nice thing about this recipe is as long as you put the cilantro on the top and not on the bottom of your recipe, of your blender, whatever, you can actually make it the night before and stick it in the fridge and just pull it out in the morning and blend it and go. Little uh, tips for people who are lazy like me. Okay, so let's see, we got cilantro, we need some orange juice. So I am actually gonna use fresh orange juice. You don't have to, you can use bottled if you want. Um, and I had, I had, I had an orange juice freezer in here. Where, oh, here it is. It's gone. What time is it? So that way I know where I'm at. 6.35. Okay, we're doing good. So we're gonna make some fresh orange juice. Monster Orange Fizz Little Bit Juicer. <laughs> and the recipe calls for a half a cup of orange juice. So if I don't get a full half cup, which it looks like that giant orange only did a quarter cup, uh, I either squeeze one more orange or uh, I put in a couple tablespoons of orange juice concentrate and then add some water if needed um, to make up for the rest of the orange juice. So there's both ways you can do it. To save time, I'm just going to put some orange juice concentrate in to make you watch me squeeze another orange. Charlotte wants to know, do you make this at the restaurant? I don't. I have all ingredients at home to make it. But if someone wanted it at the restaurant, I could probably do it just with regular blueberries instead of wild blueberries. Um, because I do keep most of the ingredients on hand. Okay, next is some extra green stuff. So we're going to put in a teaspoon. It's supposed to be a half to one. It doesn't matter. I usually put in a full teaspoon of barley grass. That's from your soup. And a uh, half to one teaspoon of spirulina. And then the last thing is, uh, it calls for Atlantic Dulce. Uh, and we do sell it. <laughs> Dulce granules, that is actually a type of a seaweed and also very, very uh, healthy for you in many ways besides helping to uh, take out heavy minerals. It's a great source of iodine. Uh, so anyway, I usually put in about a quarter to a half a teaspoon. Um, and I accidentally left my container at home and I won't open another one. So 
I'm not going to stick it in for the demo, but that is what it looks like. And uh, you can get it here. We sell it here. Uh, all the ingredients for this, the barley grass, the spirulina, the doles, I carry because I recommend this recipe. Uh, so if you can't find it, otherwise, if you don't live here, you can find it online um, or most of your health food stores can get it for you. Are you done with this one? Okay. Stick it back so I don't do All right. So that's it. It just needs water to blend. And I usually put in about a half cup or so. Where's my water? There it is. And if it needs more, I'll add more. Well, it's plenty. So we're just going to make some noise again. Sarah popped in and wanted to know what you were making. Hi, Sarah. 
we are making smoothie uh, breakfast bowls and uh, hash brown potatoes today. I hope you are hungry. So there's one potato and we'll do one more potato. One monster potato. How's that? Christine says, looks good. I can't wait for Thank all you. the recipes. Um, if you don't care to put it on this side of the table. If I have time, which I should have time to do one more recipe while these potatoes are cooking, um, I'm going to do one more smoothie with you guys. So hang in there. We're not done with the smoothies yet. This potato had some bad spots on it. Uh, Madison? put these frozen fruit back in the freezer just to keep them cold until we're ready for them again. Thank you so much. Okay, so we got our potatoes and I'm going to rinse them off here. Sarah Williams says I'm starving now. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Sarah, but I'm kind of happy because that means the food looks good. Okay, so we're going to take our potatoes and we are going to shred them. Of course, if you're just doing one potato, you can just hand shred it. It doesn't take very long. That's for shredding your knuckles. Yeah, it, that is, it does do that. I usually wear a cut-proof glove when I do this. Or we can use a salad shooter. Today we're going to go for the salad shooter. because we're going to save some time. If you haven't seen a salad shooter, you're about ready to. washes some of that starch off of them so they're not so sticky. You can see how cloudy that water is from all the starch on the potato. time. 
You want to wash it until that water comes out clear, not cloudy. Alright, there's still cash browns in there. Forget it. We're just going to dump it this way. I don't want to lose any potatoes. Alright? So there's one. Empty my bowl into the sink. My makeshift sink. If you're doing a large batch, you can just stick them in a bowl and use your towel. You don't have to get all the water out, but as much as you can as possible is going to help a lot. My bowl is wet, but I want to put it back into. nice and seasoned. I haven't put any oil on them at all. I'm just going to put some oil on my griddle and we're going to put them down on that. Yes. Thank you. Okay. We're just going to put a little coconut oil on here. I have this preheated to 400 degrees. There's not much left. <laughs> I think I'll get enough. There's enough. <coughs> Alright? 
So let's, let me see if I can get rid of some of my trash off my counter here. Give myself some working room. drive to your restaurant because you got me so hungry. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> All right, so there's about a cup of pineapple chunks. Come on, these are simple recipes. You can make them in your kitchen while you're watching me, right? <laughs> um, okay, so we got pineapple chunks in there, and then we need uh, one cup of raw greens. And when it says one cup of raw greens, that doesn't mean like, you know, about a cup like that. That means one cup where the greens are like smashed in there, right? So what I usually do is I just pack them down. You'd be amazed at how many greens you can fit in one cup. I think that looks about right there, or about one cup. Comes up to my two cup line, so that's about one cup. I used uh, about three quarters of that bowl of kale there. <laughs> and then uh, we're gonna put in, uh, Whatever your favorite milk is, um, I like to put in about a quarter cup, so not a huge amount. I'm just going to guess, okay, because I'm not going to dirty a quarter cup. A little more in there. Just depends on how creamy you want it. And then uh, you can just put water in and blend it just like that, or you can add some extra uh, powder to it. I have... Um, one that I like to use is our raw organic uh, Garden of Life raw meal. And we use it here. This one is actually vanilla flavored, so it's already got some flavor. Um, you should see the layers in this blender. <laughs> I don't know how well you can see it. Lexi? Sorry, I'm tipping in there. You're right. Look at the layers in that. Give me a spatula to see so like the rubber spatula. Isn't that pretty? You got the soy milk and the pineapple and the kale. Kale. Yes, please. Thank you. I'm going to stir this over here. So I was going to wait five minutes, but it looks like it's ready to stir now. Oh, you guys, it smells so good. You can see how beautiful and fluffy it is browning so nicely. more and we're going to put in usually this comes with a scoop but my scoop is missing so we're going to put in about one scoop of the raw meal and that's going to add some extra fiber and nutrients 
um, to our smoothie as well. And that is optional. You can use any kind of uh, meal powder or protein powder or whatever you want to put in there. Um, or you can leave it out and it's just amazing because your kale is so full of nutrients already. And uh, then you just have to add water as needed um, to get the consistency that you like. So we're going to blend this here. Um, did that plunger come back? Right there, right there. Right. Oh, it's in my. Thank you. I'm blind. All right, here we go. it up as it sits so I always add a little bit of water after it's done blending. And here is our beautiful green smoothie. Now this is the green smoothie you guys. Look at this. So this is this is one of those perfect smoothies. You know like they have the commercial it says you know like got milk and they've got those white mustache. Well this is where you need the green mustache right? Um, can I come up with green man? Oh, you gotta get your green smoothie. Let's see if I can get a green mustache. You just took it off. You did. Should I like it off? Mm -hmm. Well, it tasted good. <laughs> yeah. Is that better? Yeah. There you go. There's your green mustache. <laughs> wow, it tastes really good. I'll make you all hungry. Drink it in front of you. Wow, that's really good. All right, let's uh, serve up our hash browns. I'm going to need a plate like you put them on. So, Madison, you want to pull out all the stuff that we put in the freezer yes. and the fridge, and we're going to line it all up, and maybe um, you can help me clear up this table a little bit. Mm -hmm. And we're going to show everybody what we made tonight. Just you want to help me get all the stuff up the noodle? Yeah. Well, um, this, this is for dirty dishes. Okay, go ahead. And you can take stuff off, and take stuff to the kitchen, and throw stuff in. So you don't have to run the bridge again. We'll get the Whatever you want to do. What time is it? It's a little after seven. Okay, yeah. perfect. Perfect, perfect. Kathy Fred, I like your fluffy hash browns. 
Aren't they beautiful, Kathy? I am so excited. When I learned the secret of washing the potatoes, it was like a, everything changed for me. Yeah, I'm done with everything. Everything except the hash browns, because I'm going to eat them all. No, I'll share some with Daniel. Madison might want some, too. <laughs> Can you give me a little plate? We're going to get a little plate and uh, make a beautiful display here so you all can see everything that we've been making. Maybe I'll set it on this end. Should we go on this end? Sure. It doesn't matter. I can do it here. But stuff is already being cleared off here. So. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Perfect for the hash browns. I guess to see a little bit behind the scenes while we <laughs> they transition there and make our little display here. That way, if you come in late, you get to see everything you missed. There you go. All right, I think we have one more. I'm not sure which fridge you put it in. some simple, easy breakfast ideas. I hope you guys had fun. I had so much fun. Thank you guys for being an amazing audience. Thanks for your comments. Uh, did anyone have any other comments before I finish things out, Daniel? All right. Uh, we love you guys. And Daniel, would you be willing to close us out with a word of prayer? And then I'll make a quick announcement and finish up. Sure. bow our heads for a word of prayer. Thank you, Father, for your many blessings towards us and for the food that we have uh, shared together. I pray that you will bless each one who is watching today and, and be with them until we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you guys for coming and provide there's no ice storms or power outages or anything else crazy. Come back and join us next month in April on the third Tuesday of the month at 6 p.m for another fun class. Thank you all, have a great night. God bless you.